Hi everyone and welcome to the next FinTech Hot Seat. This is going to be on the topic of the next generation of treasury technology. And with me from Kariba, I have Terry. That's Hi, great. Tiffany. Thanks for joining today. So we know there's a lot going on with technology. You can see it by all the booths around with all the different vendors. Um, and a lot of things in today's world with, with treasury and the technology that they need, there's a lot of different data points, a lot of different connections that have to occur. So what are you seeing as the main focus today for the treasurer and technology? And where do you see that going? Like what are the issues that you see in technology today? Basically the biggest issue that uh, treasurer will face is the connection between the different uh, systems, partners, and financial institutions. So the biggest challenge is more about uh, how to get the data at the right time in the right place and be in a position to use it. So the big challenge that we see on technology is coming from what we have in the past, which in the industry was based on transfer of files. And now, because the network is so big, because the ecosystem is so big, treasurer needs to have uh, on-time information to make sure they can really take advantage of the liquidity they have, which this liquidity sometimes is trapped here or there. So the question from a treasurer is, where do I see this liquidity and how can I activate it? And from a technological perspective, the objective will be to connect all the different partners, the systems, and this will be done through the APIs. So APIs is definitely the big trend that we see, not so much about technology, but more as how to enrich the workflows between the different systems. So with APIs, um, I know I've heard it out there, there's, there's different connections for APIs. It's, to me, it's more of a refresh of data instead of the file transmission once a day. So since they're already out there, what is new about them? How are they going to use them more? What do you, what do you see coming next with those APIs? First, API is about data, but the way you can talk between the systems will be much richer. And that's the biggest difference. So basically, with files, you send something, and OK, people will integrate it and will do something with that. APIs is like a language between two systems. So you can have back and forth discussion, bring the information you need, and on this basis here, following exactly what's happening. So I will give you one example. When we interact with banks, for instance, or a, a treasurer may want to understand where the cash is, where the liquidity is. But based on what you will see as a forecast, you can decide to invest it. But investment will be done in a different system, for instance. And when you connect this, you can automate all this process, which is like, for instance, when I'm above a certain amount of cash, I can automatically invest it. And at the same time, with some information that you can get from other systems like ERP, you can understand when you will need this data. And then you can divest as well. So all these APIs will make the workflow much more fluid and then help the treasurer to understand what's happening, react more quickly, and take the right decisions. So once they have the data, so a treasurer has access to where his cash is in the world and maybe some more enriched data from the ERP system of what is forecasted out, what is the next step um, for taking that data and enriching it more for use for the future? So is that some more robotics? Is that AI? What, do you, what are you seeing with that data next? Yeah, so excellent question. Here, definitively, that will be AI and machine learning. The typical example we see as a treasurer is to better understand the forecast. And in the forecast, you have here a lot of data to take, to enrich. And then on this basis here, you can start talking about AI. The key point on AI is you need a lot of data. And those data here is what you will gather through the different APIs because you have some data here, some data there, and getting them together will provide this value. Now to interpret those data, because you have a lot of data, this is where AI will be very interesting in that context. So we see now a couple of use cases which are very important from a treasury perspective where we can automate some of the part of the system. So how are you seeing other ways that AI is being used within the different technologies out there and integrating the different systems together with that data? So from an AI perspective, as I said, we can easily gather the information. And after that, you need to interpret those information. 
So a couple of use cases that we speak to treasurer. Um, it's a typical use case where AI will be successful in, for instance, in reconciliation. Reconciliation is a kind of automation that you have to put in place. In place. But when you want to put this in place, uh, the rules to automate can be very, very complex. Easy for a human, but very complex, for instance, for a robot. The AI here is much more intelligent than the robot and can grasp here based on what you have done over the last 11 months, for instance, and can replace this instead of being a human. We have done this kind of things in our innovation labs, and we can replicate here the human behavior. So those are the use cases where definitively AI will bring added value. The other type of, uh, of usage will be, for instance, on the forecast part. Forecast is, I would say, an art or a science, it depends. <laughs> but this is where you need to have those data and teach the algorithm here to understand, pre based on the previous um, forecast and variances, how um, you can forecast accurately this part of, uh, of your entity, for instance, or this company. So some of our customers currently are looking at how to be better at the forecast, because a little bit of percentage of accuracy more will mean freeing more cash. And freeing more cash means that you can invest. So you can optimize your cash in that way. So I agree with you. Forecasting is one of those challenging things, the art, the science. Um, I haven't seen yet where AI has been able to accurately forecast without that human intervention of knowing. Um, but where do you see technology taking AI to the next step? I know we can utilize it for forecasting. It's not, it's there, but it's not quite there yet, I guess, as an exact science. Yes, exactly. So the use case where it can be immediately used is clearly reconciliation, because reconciliation is based on the complexity of the ecosystem made of systems. So basically here, as a human being, you can catch the pattern and you can do it manually. And the AI here can easily do that. Forecast is more complicated because inside you have a behavior which is basically on the receivables. You don't know as a treasurer when you will be paid. And when you're paying is dependent, of course, of the habits of the other treasurer, but not only. It can be just due to the event happening to the company that is supposed to pay you. And guess what? They don't have enough cash right now, so they will postpone the payment by a week time. So that's why the forecast is much more complicated. Um, the, uh, the use case we have done, we extracted 70,000 invoices of a customer, and we teach the uh, machine learning algorithm on 50,000. So it's a lot of data that you have to bring, and it's, it will never replace the people mind, because the way we have done it was very close with the customer here, so that he can tell us what are the dimensions which were relevant for his business to teach this to the AI uh, algorithm. So definitely that will be the long term. <laughs> <laughs>